Okay, welcome to In The Chair. Today we're joined by Gary Ringrose and Sammy Arnold. Guys, thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks for Thank you. Survived the, uh, the snowmageddon over the weekend? Yeah, uh, the snow wasn't actually too bad in Limerick. It was some of the guys I lived with saying it's the most they've ever seen, but I've, I've probably seen a bit a bit more back home. But I was driving up through Dublin and there was two big walls of snow either side of the road, so there was a bit of a shock coming up, yeah. Yeah, you guys wouldn't have been born back in 1982 in the big snow that they're talking about. So listen, last week, uh, Gary, was a, a, a rest week. You had a, a couple of sessions early in the week, including an open session in Aviva Stadium. It was pretty cold that day, and then the, the, the snow set in from there. What, what's a, a rest week normally like for you? What, what, what do you actually have to do? Uh, yeah, well, I suppose last week was um, slightly different because of the snow, but because uh, Leinster were due to have a game, and because I was kind of just returning back from injury, that... I was in kind of training and trying to get through as much as work as possible uh, just because I'm off the back of a couple of weeks out so um, last week was in, in Lancer to keeping the fitness ticking over uh, as well as getting a co couple of S and, or strength sessions in and, and then trying to have the ball in the hands as well so um, it wasn't too much of a break you kind of just try and get in for maybe two or three hours and then you have the rest of the days to yourself so uh, but obviously then there was one or I think one of the days with the snow, we had to just kind of batten down the hatches and, and stay at home. Stay at home, put the yeah. feet up. And, yeah. Okay. And, and so you, what did you think of the open session? That was your, your second one. You, you were at the one then in Jabari Park as well. They're great days, aren't they? Yeah, it was really enjoyable. There was a, it's actually a pretty big crowd there as well, so it was nice to kind of get that feel of the training at the Aviva and the environment as well, so it was good. And then, obviously, that was the first session for me at the open session, kind of with the, there was 25 or 26 of us, so getting used to all the calls and the speed of, international training I suppose so yeah I found it really beneficial it was really good how have you found it since you came into the camp I mean the the, the, the step up the, in all of that yeah it's definitely a massive massive step up just um, I've just been trying to trying to take on as much information as I can learn from guys like Gary he's obviously been in here for a while as well and uh, Chris when he was in Bundy uh, Rory guys like that and kind of just get get a feel for the environment the way Joe wants us to play and kind of pick up as much as I can as I go and, and learn as much as I can, like I said, yeah. Gary, just uh, just to, to talk to the two of you, but starting with you, Gary, about your kind of your pro career to date, you, you've come that traditional route uh, through school and into the Leinster Academy, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, I was in the academy there for two years and then got a crack at Leinster, there was a couple of injuries and one or two lads retired, so managed to play through Leinster for, I think it was about a year and a half, uh, and then I got a, a crack here in Irish camp, so I was lucky that... Um, it was never like a massive jump. I managed to get two years at under 20s, one of them with Sammy, uh, say two years in the academy as well, then a year with Leinster, and then managed to get in here and, and kind of train. And obviously it's a massive step up and it's the pinnacle of kind of any young lad trying to be in with the Irish setup. So, um, yeah, it's been pretty cool the last couple of years, the kind of journey I've been on. It's in some ways. I mean, you said there it was it was kind of a, a steady progress, but to on the outside it kind of looked like this meteoric rise in a way. Yeah, well, I suppose makes someone like Jordan Larmer it makes what he's doing even more impressive, considering that he's still twenty and just off the back of under twenties coming straight in and has kind of come in pretty seamless with with Leinster in Ireland. So um, yeah, I was lucky to have a couple of years though to kind of gradually progress to to where I am now. And, and Sam, you're, you, you've come through the exile system, so you were born in England. Um, talk to us a little bit about that and, and, and what made you want to play for Ireland? Uh, so my, uh, my mum's from Wexford and my grandparents are uh, from, my granddad's from Cork, Bear Island, and my granny's from Wexford as well. So growing up, I was always kind of torn between the two. And then um, it got to a point where I sort of had to make a decision to either go ahead with the exiles or try and carry on with the kind of English aid grade stuff. But I made a decision to do the the Irish eighth grade stuff did um, a couple of years with the Irish clubs and then from there I went to the Ulster Academy um, did a year at 20s with Gary and then unfortunately I missed my second year at 20s through injury but that's sort of the way I came through there. So from that Ireland under 18 clubs team with the Exiles I mean you actually made your Ulster debut at 18 so that was that was pretty special I'd say. Yeah that was pretty cool. Um, Obviously, it was an awesome experience. We were playing away to Dragons. We actually lost that game, so obviously it wasn't the ideal debut. But, um, yeah, just to kind of get that first cap and play with guys. We were in Pino. I actually played out half that day, and I came on at 12, so that was a pretty cool experience. But I probably had a lot of luck of injuries as well. I think Luke Marshall, Stu McCloskey, I think, um, were both injured, so that sort of gave me the pathway through. And then, 
I sort of went on from there, yeah. Well, you, you had the luck at the start there getting in early, but uh, then after that, it, you, you've had a difficult couple of years with injuries with Ulster and then moving down to Munster. What happened there? Um, yeah, it's, it was a tough 18 months or so. So um, I just signed for Munster and I tore my hamstring in the European game against Oyanax. And um, I came back from that ham hamstring tear, re-tore it, came back from that one, tore it again. Um, was in pre-season with Munster um, one week in and I did my cruciate in my knee, which sort of kept me out till the end of November, I think. Um, I was back playing for about six weeks, I tore my medial in my other knee, which kept me out for about eight weeks again. And then sort of for the rest of the season, I was getting niggles and couldn't really get my body right. I wasn't playing well and I was sort of just struggling to get that robustness. but. I played, I played a lot more minutes this year, probably the most rugby I've actually played, matches-wise in senior senior rugby, so yeah, look, my body feels really good now and I'm just happy to be back playing and grateful and hopefully kick on. And, and here you are now, and you've both mentioned that you, you played a season together at Ireland under 20s, 2015 season I think, wasn't it? Yeah, what was that like? Yeah it was, yeah, it was pretty cool, playing alongside Sam, um, he makes my job a little bit easier playing alongside him, uh, so it was with the Six Nations, which we had a couple of good wins, but didn't go to plan really in terms of there was no success at the end of it. And then we were over in uh, Italy, I think it was, for the Junior World Cup, which similarly we put in a couple of good performances, but uh, yeah, we didn't really finish as, as much as we liked it or fulfilled the potential. There was a couple of guys that are in here now playing. Um, I know Jacob Stockdale was, was there, Andrew Porter, Joey Carberry, and, and maybe one or two more that were playing that year. So um, it was pretty cool that we've kind of progressed together and, and in here now. And so you you've played together in, in that season. Are, are you two guys plotting something now for the for the national team for the senior team? The two of you have reunited at some point. Would that be special? I think obviously at some point I'd be delighted to play with Gary again. At some point, you know, uh, when or if it will ever happen, I don't know. You know, um, I think the main thing from the squad point of view here is trying to put your individual ambitions aside as much as you can. You know, the guys are doing. Awesome, they're th they're three from three. Um, this is the first time I've been in an Irish squad. I'm trying to learn as much as I can, you know, and kind of be be ambitious but be kind of sensible as well, you know. Um, but I I'd hope one day that me and Gary would line up alongside yeah. each other again one day. Yeah. yeah, could be something to see. Uh, was it was it good coming in then that that you had somebody like Gary that you had played alongside and the other guys from that under twenty team as you mentioned Joey and Jacob and others that you were familiar with faces coming into what I presume is a fairly daunting environment. Yeah, I think it gives you a lot of confidence. I think um, I think Gary was the first one from our under twenties that sort of came in, and then uh, Jacob, Andrew Porter, uh, Joey. So like. You see how Jacob's playing at the moment, you know, that only gives you confidence. Uh, you know, we are playing the same under 20s team as him, and he's the way he's playing now, and the way Gary's played for Ireland as well, you know, it does make you think maybe I can give this a crack and maybe I can do it as well. So, yeah, it definitely gives you that, that, that confidence to try, and, to try and kick on yourself, and yeah. It seems, Gary, in the last couple of seasons, in the last few seasons, more and more guys have been making that step from 20s which in many ways is a finishing school, isn't it? It's a, it's a proving ground. But they've been making that step from 20s to the pro career quicker. So we've seen the likes of, of James obviously coming through, James Ryan and, and, and Ports and, and now Jordan that you mentioned. What's the experience like there of that, that Six Nations and that Junior World Championship? Do, does it arm you for, the, for a pro career or does it just make you realise how much work you've got to do? Um, I don't know, it's a tricky question. It's a combination of loads of things. I know that academy structures that are in place are, are getting better each year and then playing in under 20s you're exposed to better standard against against the other countries and um, it seems each year even stuff like the open sessions so on Tuesday we would have been training against the 20s and even being in for a day and, and catching a glimpse of how it operates and what how Joe works and the intensity the seniors train at something like that gives you an insight into kind of what it takes so it exposes, exposes it to you and kind of take a bit of confidence from being able to keep up but then it also kind of shows you what what's required, and you see how hard the guys are working and the detail that goes into, you know, I mean, the the game on the weekend in the Aviva, and, and then how much work you've got to do individually to get there. And Sam, was that a shock to the system for you in terms of the amount of work that that's there? The the, you know, it's not just training, it's not just gym. There's so many extras when you when you step into an Ireland camp. Yeah, I think when you step in, you realise there's kind of so much more than the kind of key components you you get in you see the detail the kind of depth of the analysis that Joe and 
thousand guys go into and you really realise that you need to, when you are in here, you need to work hard, you need to learn as much as you can, get it all down. Like even today, we had that, we had a, a Vax defence review and just the amount of detail in that is, it's, it's a lot, you know, and it is a lot to take on, but, you know, the onus is on us after training this evening to get in our books, get on the computers and learn it and pick it all up as quick as we can. Well, look, guys, we're, we're very grateful for you to take time out and come and see us. We know it's a busy week. We wish you both the best of luck, and uh, we do hope to see both of you wearing uh, the green jersey reunited, that centre partnership at some stage for Ireland. Guys, best of luck in the weeks ahead. Cheers very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.